Right, so what are my favorite products of the new releases of 2021? Well, I'm gonna to put together a what's in the bag and no expense spared, this is what I'd put together right now. So we're gonna start things off with wedges. We'll start off down uh, that lower end of the bag. And for me, the two, the Mizuno ES21 wedges are unreal. Uh, like I said, they're expensive, but don't forget, no expense spared. Um, but they do offer a great deal in terms of their quality. They're superb. And the things I like about them are, A, I love this wide sole. I'm a big fan of that for average golfers. I think I've mentioned that on numerous occasions now, the likes of Cleveland CBX wedges. I think that they are, I was gonna say idiot proof. They're not quite that, but they help us massively in terms of not thinning and chunking wedge shots. So that's gotta be a bonus for us average golfers. But what I like, I like aesthetics on these, but they've got a massive uh, sort of bulbous back end. They'd very much be classed as a game improvement type wedge. But what they've done very cleverly at Mizuno is they've hidden all of that. They've hidden that bulk and mass that from the top line, there's a huge drop off in the way it's chamfered off. So therefore, when you sit it at the top behind the ball, you see that top line, you're not put off as you normally might be from that big game improvement style looks. I love the black finish, but I also love the contrast that they've done with the, with the silver finish in the way it frames the ball. Again, if you want more details on this, have a look at the full review because they've also changed that CG point. Um, there's a bit of tech spec in these, which I actually think is kind of ringing true in the practice that I've had with them. So for me, expensive, yes, but real top quality start to the bag. And they're the two wedges, 54 and 58 is what I'd put in my current bag. Right, next up, I'm gonna have a look at the irons and uh, a slightly odd one in the sense that I've got three different types of irons from one range all in the bag and I've never done that before. So it's obviously a blended set and it would be from the Callaway Apex range, which I think they've done an amazing job uh, this year, Callaway with this Apex range. I think it's just always admired these irons, but this year it is, uh, it's more interesting the fact they've introduced this DCB range. Also worth pointing out, I did a video early on in January. I highlighted these irons as uh, possibly the best club I've tested in 21. And people, a few people commented, how can you decide this so early? Well, it was because we tested all clubs by then and I still stick by it. These irons are phenomenal. I would start down the lower end of the bag and pitch and wedge through to eight iron. I'd be comfortable enough to put the Apex Pro in the bag. I think this iron looks superb. Out of the three different styles that are within the range, if I could play these right throughout the bag, this is what I'd go for. But we're gonna mix it up a little based on recognizing your own ability. But from pitching wedge through to eight iron, where you're looking for a little bit of finesse, you're looking for perhaps that smaller head profile, forged iron, tungsten weighting, still got help in there. I'm more than comfortable with playing those irons. And like I said, visually, I think they look amazing. But then I'd stop at the eight iron and I'd switch into what would be the standard product. And I'd put a seven and a six iron in the bag of the Apex standard. Now again, they go a little bit more bulkier, which we'd expect. The top line becomes wider, the sole becomes wider, but not um, in, in, to, to a degree that would put you off in any way and perhaps just inspire a little bit of confidence. But again, the idea to blend the sets would end up with being only a seven and a six iron in the standard. And I would have no problem then in going into this DCB product. This was the new range. It was almost like a game improvement style uh, forged iron from um, from Callaway. And it is a little bit more bulk and mass, but it's at an end of the bag where I want that bulk and mass and I want confidence. So when I put this five iron down, I'm not looking for finesse necessarily. I'm looking for help and assistance. Longer shaft, less loft, all becomes a little bit more difficult. On the testing, I was hitting the DCB five iron around 190 carry, phenomenal ball flight, easy to launch and it's the perfect end to the bag. So I go pitching wedge through to five iron and that's where the irons would stop for me. And that's me done. But that whole range, I think what they've done, the ability to blend those three sets is a real winner, I think this year from Callaway. I've never put together a set of clubs where my longest iron in the bag is a five. So this is all new for me. And uh, like I said, I mean, traditionally, if I'm honest with you, I would go as far as uh, keeping a three iron. But I think that what I've learned over the past few months in terms of this testing is that maybe there is a more, um, a more favorable bag for the average golfer to put together. So 
I would go then into a hybrid and um, the hybrid would be, and you've already seen the bag several times on the floor, so you know where these are coming from. They're from Ping. It's the G425 series and again, no secret, I go into fairway woods and that comes from them as well. I think just the overall message throughout my videos is that their star of the show in terms of their range this year has been the hybrids and fairways. Most drivers, I think we've sort of got very much to the limits. Irons have improved, but hybrids and fairways to me are where I've seen marked improvements. And these are phenomenal. I mean, these literally are, I've took them out on several occasions on course. We've tested here at Four Golf. They just do things very, very well, launch the ball as you'd want it to. There's adjustability in each and every one of them. So again, masses of options for gapping your bag correctly. So I would go from a five iron into a four hybrid that is currently set at 22 degrees. And I might just strengthen that just a little to get that gap between my five and what would be this four hybrid, make sure that sits in nice. But like I said, as I've said with the Apex as well, stunning to look at. I love the matte black finish. I love the fact that we've lost turbulators from the crown and you just see that matte finish. The three dots frame the ball incredibly well, as does the white faces around the, uh, or lines around the edge of the ball. They just do everything so well. And again, I suppose on a personal note, I love the Alter CB shaft as well. So, uh, well, as you can see, very positive about the 425 range. And I'll quickly tell you that I would then go to a seven wood. Yet yeah, I've harped on about these, uh, well, best part of a year, we had a look at one of these not so long ago. And uh, this one, again, is an absolute weapon. It's just, I can't believe, to be honest with you, how well this thing performed out on the course. It's, it's a seven wood, it's 20.5 degrees in terms of its loft as standard. Again, has that flexibility and being able to adjust loft. So again, fitting that next gap up as to what I'm looking for. It currently sort of went in around the sort of 210 mark. Again, maybe strengthen just a little bit just to increase that uh, gap between that and the four hybrid, but we've got plenty of ability to do that. Uh, weight push right at the back, launches the ball incredibly high. Love the shallow face, that's a personal thing, but if I thought, you know, again, if I was saying to golfers, average golfers out there, the clubs to try, if you try nothing else, it would be this G425 hybrid and fairway range. Um, and then I'd go into a five wood, uh, 17 and a half degrees loft. Again, does everything I've just, I'm not gonna repeat it, so it does everything that the seven wood does with a slightly lower ball flight, but still, um, again, we were looking at sort of, I reckon we're getting in that, around that sort of 215 to 220 mark again. Again, repeating what I'm already saying, gapping it is very easy to do with that adjustability. Unreal, honestly, they, them clubs, so far what we've got in the bag, and like I said, you're spending a few quid here, I've already said that, uh, but that is an unreal set of clubs we've got so far. We've got two to look at, we've got driver and putter, and that leaves us with one spare gap in the bag. Right, so before the big reveal in terms of the driver, we're at the bottom end of the bag and it's the putter. In all honesty, I could have probably picked uh, maybe three, four different options to put in the bag. But for me, this uh, version of the Spider, the FCG, was particularly impressive. On a personal level, I love the idea of using a blade putter, but my putting style very much suits a mallet. They've got plenty of, and, and, and it's kind of, they've almost done a mix of the two. So it's got a blade-like look almost, the white element that you see, but then it's got the supportive elements that you get from a mallet. Um, it gets the ball rolling particularly well. I love the way the putter is balanced. Again, very much a personal and preference thing. And again, a really simple but strong alignment aid on the front. So for me, the TaylorMade FCG, would be, uh, would be the putter of choice. And of course, I love this sort of plumb line neck as well, but that again, very much a personal choice. So there's only one thing left and that's the driver. Right, so we're into the top end of the bag. I'm still sticking around with the driver. And for me, from the 2021 releases, honestly, I could have probably picked any one from about four, but I'm gonna go with the Callaway Epic 21. And I'd be stuck, to be honest with you, as to whether or not I'd go for the Max product or the Speed, because I'm really liking both. Um, and there's little to split them. I would carry on doing further testing. At the moment, it's the Speed product that I've got in hand, and that's the one I'm sort of 
leaning towards in terms of more aesthetically how it looks and the style of the head but just as an overall with this epic range what they do for me and what i like about them i love the acoustics from this driver i think it's fantastic love it on the ear i love it at a dress and in terms of out and out performance it did really well in terms of maintaining ball speed which i always think that suggests decent forgiveness because i'm never going to hit this driver consistently out the middle of the face so it maintained high ball speeds suggesting forgiveness and it also did well downrange in terms of dispersion they were incredibly tightly packed it's different on the range than it is out on the golf course so we shall see how that would perform in real conditions but this would certainly be the one that i would choose based on all the testing i've done so far closely followed by yet again i think it would be that ping g425 so that's me into the top end of the bag let's not forget i've said all along we'll put a total up now of how much this would cost because it's an expensive set of golf clubs it really is the best that's out there in my opinion if i was putting the bag together for me now but you'd need deep deep pockets anyway as ever thank you for watching i think what i'd like to know is what's on your wish list any of those products or what are you looking at in particularly this year uh, comment down below hit that like button and i'll see you very soon Interesting enough, just to clarify once again, we've been walking around the par three course at the back of four golf. We aren't hitting any golf shots whatsoever uh, before anybody worries if we're breaking any lockdown rules. We're certainly not.